You made it. <coughs> Hello, this is Muhammad Sadiq. Welcome to Online Training Universe, the next episode of Hangout. Today I have a very special guest, Robert Kennedy III. Robert is a life performance coach and a small business consultant. I will be introducing him in just a moment. Thank you so much for joining me on this live performance training today. If you are on YouTube, Google Plus, and Online Training Universe, please comment through the G Plus or Facebook comments. Or if you're in the G Plus, you can, you know, you see the, the, the comment below, please write down the, your, you, where you're hanging out from. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to, Robert, where are you hanging out from today? I'm coming in from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Wonderful. Thank you for joining. Get involved in the social conversation. Let us know where you're hanging out from. That brings us to today's topic, 28 ways to transform your life and business. I am sure we all can use that, you know. So hopefully that's not a lot of work. We will find out soon from our <laughs> from our friend and guest, gentleman who is my today is my guest is Robert Candy, third perform, life performance coach. Robert Candy, third is a coach at heart. In on, in the May of 2013, Robert released a 28 days to a new me, a journey of commitment and a plan to release the audio book in 2014, and hopefully. I, uh, Robert is on track to release that audio book. Uh, Robert is married to a beautiful wife, Nadia, for 12 years and have three awesome kids, currently living in Baltimore County, Maryland. In his free time, Robert plays basketball, softball, golf, as well as keyboard and guitar. That's a lot of uh, interesting stuff, Robert. Please join me to welcome uh, my, my guest, Robert Kennedy, third. Robert, welcome. Hey, thank you so much. Let me, Robert, let me start with this. What makes you uniquely qualified to speak about life performance coaching? Man, I don't know what makes me uniquely qualified. I, I think I'm alive. I'm a human being. I've got a wife and kids, and I've got a story, much as, much as most of us do. And so I like to share some of the things that I've gone through or that, that I've done in my journey. And I think the biggest thing is that I love to see other people succeed. So I love to empower and inspire people towards success as well. Cool. So why life performance is so important to achieve a greater success? Well, um, I think a lot of us have, we, we live life and we live, uh, we go to work every day, we do, uh, we take care of our families, we do what is what is normal. And sometimes we've got challenges, we've got difficulties, and a lot of people just feel like they don't have any choice or they don't have anything that they can do differently to make their life successful or to make themselves um, get to a place where they're they're happy with the life that they've designed for themselves and a lot of us kind of blame other people and we blame circumstances and things because we don't feel like we have input in the process of our life so I just wanted to share with everybody I wanted to 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 impart to people that yes you do have a choice yes you can be successful yes you can have the attitude and the mindset and the skill set that it does take to be successful at, at, at living, at, at gaining, a, at starting a business, at doing anything that you choose to do to make your life the one that you designed. Okay, Robert, what is a life performance by definition? Well, you know what? Um, I, I think performance really is uh, what. When I started my business, um, I, I had I hired a business coach, and my coach, one of the in one of our first conversations, he said to me, you know, there are two places that you can live. You can live in the world of reasons, or you can live in the world of performance. Now, the world of reasons is based on what what the reasons are that things happen, or they, you know, I I didn't get to do this because my son was sick, or I had to go pick up something from the supermarket or because it snowed I wasn't able to do this and the world of performance is black and white either you did it or you didn't if you've got a health issue or if you're trying to uh, get more buff you're trying to work out and all of those types of things and you don't do it 
either you did it or you didn't that day. So performance is really pushing people towards results. So performance is, is black and white, results-based. Either it happened or it didn't. So in the different areas of our life, really trying to push people towards or empower people towards results. How do your clients typically get started with you to improve their life performance and their business on a step-by-step -step basis? Um, well, there are a couple of ways. I, a lot of people either connect with me via workshops or webinars, those types of things, or meeting me in person at um, networking events, and so we kind of uh, make connections from there. So what we, it's, what we do initially, I have what I call a, a breakthrough or a strategy session with clients initially to find out what they want, what their goals are, what their dreams are, what inspires them, and where they want to go. And so from there, we determine what is the best way to, to, to move forward. So I've got a couple of programs that, that I have people join in with me on. I've been running this program called 28 Days to a New Me on Facebook and online since 2012. And so we've had people do a lot of different things in that. Uh, some people have lost weight. Some people have written, uh, started a new business, uh, reformatted their relationships, and those types of things. And so on the personal side, that's, that's where we start. But I've also got a business coaching group that we work with young business or, or new small business owners on as well. So those are the couple of ways that we get connected. Wonderful. What if any of our community members are uh, viewers who got who got started today with with your life performance and business coaching? Mm -hmm. What would be their life look like in 30 days, 90 days, a year, or maybe even three years from now? Well, you know what? That that th there's no concrete answer for that. That really depends on you. I'm a I'm one person. I'm I'm a coach, and my my job is to really help bring out the best in you to help you to see what your potential is and help you act on that potential. But what it comes down to is each of us, if you're committed to this thing, if you decide that I really want to get this done, if your why or the reason why you're doing this is just burning so badly inside of you, then yeah, in 30 days, yeah, you can make quite a turnaround. You can do quite a few things in, in 90 days in a year. You can make great differences. I don't know if you've heard of the whole uh, P90X and and those exercise programs, you know, where in 90 days you see this radical change in people's bodies. At the end of the day, that result doesn't happen for everybody. It happens to those that want it so badly and they're committed enough that they're going to do the activity every day. So that that's what it comes down to, just being committed. Well said. Yeah, of course, you can buy anything in your life and keep it on your bookshelf until yeah. you read the book. <laughs> There's no, nothing is going to happen automatically. There's no magic pill. Exactly, exactly. I've heard people say that some people are into shelf development instead of self-development. They leave the stuff on the shelf. I love that. <laughs> what are the specific roadblocks that typically prevent your client from getting started with the life performance coaching? Well, the biggest thing is, is, is fear. The biggest thing is fear. We're all, we all have these, uh, the, something that we fear at some point in our life. And I posted something on my Facebook page this morning that said, you know, all of us go through dark moments. All of us go through moments of doubt and moments of where, where things didn't go as we planned. But it's the warrior that pushes through in spite of all of those things. So a lot of us have fears. A lot of us uh, care about what everybody else thinks. We're, we're, you know, we don't want to be embarrassed. We're scared of failing. There are a lot of different things. Um, in, in business, a lot of times the, the, uh, the roadblock is, is simply money. You know, so there are a lot of different things, and some people kind of feel like, oh, gee, if I don't have enough money, then my business stops here. But, you know, we empower people to be creative so that they can move around those roadblocks using the, the inborn talents and gifts that they have because it's possible. I hear it. I'm sure. <laughs> How you remove their objections? Let's say some say, "I don't want to start it now." Or, you know, so it's not the right time for me. Uh huh. Well, it, the the question is, if not now, then when? You know, if you can answer me when, as in, "Yup, 
I know that everything is going to be perfectly aligned and perfect and it will work on next week, on February 7th, then um, if you can guarantee that, sure, I'll have no issues with it. But the reality is none of us can guarantee that. And if you want change, if you want transformation bad enough, then why put it off until tomorrow or why put it off until next week or next month? If you want it bad enough. And, and sometimes I'm talking to people and I use the example. I say, listen, if you uh, got a call and somebody said, hey, your, your child is, has been arrested in jail and they need to be bailed out, okay? Would you say, hmm, I don't have enough money. I don't think, yeah, may, maybe we'll get them out next week. No, you, <laughs> you would work it out. You would make it happen because that situation is something that is just that important to you to, to, to deal with it and to create something to make it happen right then. Robert, what I hear is you're saying is like you do what's the priority, not what's important. You know, So they have to make that as a priority. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know if I distinguish between importance and priority, but I, I'll share another saying that my own coach used to say to me. He said, when you're interested, you do what's convenient. But when you are committed, you do everything that it takes. So, yeah, difference between interest and commitment. Cool. What are the specific strategies that are like keys to unlock the roadblocks? Uh, Roadblock doors to achieve wild success. Okay. Well, the specific strategy is is number one. I mean, we've we've kind of had that as a theme here. Being committed, number one. Being two. Being willing to fail. Okay. Because there is no um, magic pill. There's no perfect path. Uh, there's no way that is without obstacles in it. So that you, you're you're going to have to embrace failure. Okay, uh, there was there was the movie Apollo uh, 13 that had the statement in it, um, failure is not an option. And I, you know, I kind of wrote a blog post last year that said uh, failure absolutely is an option and it's a requirement because in order to learn, in order to succeed, in order to decide or see what things work and what things don't, you've got to fail sometimes. You got to mess up. I, I am all for it. I like your words. Failure is the option. You have to go through the failures. I have gone through many failures. In fact, I probably, we all, whatever we do, there's always something not working the way you, way you think. Yeah. So, uh, failure is, in fact, after many, many failures, there's, that's a road to a success. That's where the, if all failures leads to a success. You have to go through that route. I don't know. I have not seen anyone actually going through success after success. Yeah, even, even the big names which we, you and I both know, and many. If you are watching, I'm sure you can relate to that. But you only share the, you only see, and you only oh, they are like a billionaires, and they never tell you how many billions they lost. Even Donald Trump are bankrupt in '92. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I talk about sometimes um, the fact that in in the t book that I wrote, 28 Days to a New Me, I talked about how when you go to the gym and you are lifting weights. Uh, and they tell you to push until failure because, you know, it's, it's when you reach your limit and you can't push anymore, that's when you, the, muscle, the, the muscle fibers break in order to allow the bigger muscle or the, the stronger muscle fibers to come through. So, you know, unless you have failure, then, then, then the stronger piece will never come through. Thank you, Robert. I have to apologize to uh, that the title of our presentation was 27 ways to life and to transform our life and business. I apologize. Robert said it is 28 ways, not 27 ways. So it's one more additional. So we hang around with us, share with your friends on Facebook and G Plus and YouTube. So we are about to cover 28 ways to transform your life and business, not 27. So it's a one plus more. So that's a, I would say gravy. I will start with the first one. Bonus. Robert, I'm going to ask you one by one. Robert shared with me before we went into this presentation so I can make some notes. So <clears throat> I have prepared a 28 flip notes for this so that way here's the first one. Yeah. So go for it. <laughs> well, you know what? I like to say that success happens outside of the comfort zone. 
So a lot of us, our comfort zone is it starts with something simple like eating. So you want to do something different in your life? Eat something different today. You know, I, I go to the a lot of people go to the same restaurants and they get the same thing. Eat something different today. In business, um, don't think about always selling stuff. Sometimes it's good just to call five people just to see what they're up to. It's about relationship, and you'll see how that'll transform your business. So, tell us a little more. What do you mean, eat something different? Okay, I, I see that. Eat something different, and you're saying in the business, call five people just to see what they are up to. Yep. Tell us a little more on that one. What What do you mean by calling five people? Should I call randomly five people, see what they're up to? Or, I mean, what, what you're trying to teach us here? Well, I have, um, most of us have um, an inbox, or we have a contact list. Now, that contact list could be made up of just our family, it could be made up of our friends, it could be other people that we've met at business networking functions. And sometimes, especially when you're struggling in business, um, you know, my, again, I refer to my coach quite a bit. Um, he said that all the business I'll ever need is in my inbox. Okay? So I, calling people just to see what they're up to really connects you with people, allows you to figure out what their needs are and possibly how you can help them because we're essentially in business to help people. I'm not in business just to sell you stuff. I'm in business to help you with a possible solution to your problem. So call it, you won't know what the problems are unless you call people. So call, get in the habit of just calling five people a day. Cool. The day two, the tip two is Drive a different way home or to work. Ah. Draw a picture of your target market avatar and describe it. Yes. Okay. So um, I used to be in real estate. And one of the things that they said in real estate to kind of keep your mind fresh, keep your mind um, thinking about creative uh, solutions to problems is not to get into that same exact routine. Performing behaviors consistently, but not getting into the same routine. So one of the things they said to do was to drive a different way home, drive a different way to an appointment, or drive a different way to work. It just keeps you in problem-solving mode. It keeps you in the mode of um, what do I need to do to to get to this point, from point A to point B. And you know, it, it just keeps you flexible in that way. So in in the business, um, drawing a picture of your target market avatar and describing it. So when you are selling or when you are, I, I, let me erase that word selling, when you are in business you've got to know who are the people that uh, need whatever solution it is that you have and you've got to know them intimately and that's one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of business owners make. They don't know who that person is. They don't know what they look like. They don't know what color their hair is. They don't know if they look like Sadiq. They don't know if they look like Robert. They don't know where they hang out. They don't know anything about them. So if you don't know these things, how do you know that you can help them? So as, as specifically as possible, it might be a joking thing for some people, but yeah, if you're in business, um, draw a picture of them. Get out a pen and paper and literally start writing down who is this person that you are looking to help and get connected with them and find out where they are. Cool. The day three and tip three, say hello to 20 new people in one day to improve your life and in business. Send a handwritten note to a farmer or a potential client. Yes. Say hello to 20 new people. You know what? That may be as simple as just saying hi when you walk down the street to somebody. Um, but the other piece of that is not just saying hi and going on, listening for their response and then saying have an awesome day and then you can keep going. But it's really about forming relationships daily. The essence of life, the essence of business is relationships. And so if you do that and you get used to doing that every day, then it's, it's, things are going to open up quite significantly for you. So in business, um, sending a handwritten note to a former or a potential client. Most businesses, a lot of businesses don't care, but yours should. And sending a handwritten note really makes you stand out. Um, I, I don't know, when was the last time you received a handwritten note from somebody? 
Yeah, so once in a while in December on a Christmas time, and only from right. very few, and the whole year is pretty empty. <laughs> right, but if you did, if you received a handwritten note from a former customer or from a, a, a vendor, it would make a difference for you. And so they want to know that you're thinking about them. It, again, it's talking. It's about relationships. So there's a company that I use, and a lot of people have heard about it. Sendoutcards.com, and you know, it's that's not exactly handwritten, but you do you do put um, notes in a handwritten font on that, and you know, it's it's just a really great way to show that you authentically care. Cool. The day four. Write a poem or a song, short song slash jingle to improve your life? Yeah, just doing something different. Some of us think that we're not creative people, and it's really just about exercising your mind and getting outside of your comfort zone. Uh, you know, we're not talking about doing something that you need to submit to American Idol or anything like that. It's just about doing something different. You can write a poem about your favorite food. You can write about how much you love the President of the United States. You can write about uh, your favorite pet. doesn't really matter, but the idea is just to spend a moment being creative. Okay? So that's the life part. So the business part, engaging with 25 different people on social media. So maybe I should, should have put this uh, on the same page as day three with the, the meeting 20 people. But right now, in business, um, social media is a pretty big platform for you to engage with people. And a lot of people just kind of put messages. They don't understand social media. They put messages on Twitter and then wonder why nobody is um, is coming to their business. Okay, So it's really about engagement. And you'll hear me say it over and over again. It's about relationship. Okay, Talking to specific people, going on Twitter and, and, and doing an app for some somebody and saying, hey, just wondering how you're doing. Okay, Not trying to sell them, just saying, hey, Starting conversations. I can, Robert. I can second that for our viewers. Uh, you know, Robert and myself, we are we were connected on LinkedIn, and uh, I posted that I'm looking for a specific type of guest. Robert outreached to me, and we had the conversation. And at the end, now we are on this hangout. That's how the relationships are built. If yeah. Robert has not followed his own uh, process of reaching out 25 people, I probably maybe I was 25th one on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Or so, you were the first. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You know, you are the first or you are the last one. It doesn't matter as far as you, the connection is made, and it's a more relevant and, and uh, engagement engaged level. Not like just uh, you know check my uh, check my sales page. You know that that doesn't really work much. Yeah. So it it does really work. So if you are 25 people, yeah, even though you can start with five if you can do it you know yep. don't have to be 25 so oh 25 is too much i don't have that much time that's not excuse you know right starts with start with one every day then you can ramping up with as much as you can exactly yeah. i i use that by the way robert and we both are on the same page i cannot stress enough how you outreach to people that's the way it's in fact social media has made so easy i don't know why we do not do this right That leads us to the day five and tip five. Day five and tip five. Buy a new book. You know what? Uh, I was somebody, although I read a whole lot, I read, my mom used to laugh because she bought me kids books to read, but um, I read all of them so fast that I ended up reading like the encyclopedia, okay? And some of her medical books and those types of things at, you know, the age of six and seven. And so I liked to read them, but as I got older, Maybe because I got worn out by college, I stopped reading. I read like um, newspaper articles, or I read you know little things, but I didn't do any deep reading. But I also heard that leaders are readers. Okay, you've got to gain different perspectives. It's not just about you and what you think. Reading helps you to gain perspectives and inspiration from other areas of life and so not just reading the same genre or the same type of book but reading different things getting exposure to some different things so that's uh, why I say to buy a new book on the business end of things choosing a business hero and purchasing a book by them or about them I'll, I'll tell you my business hero or one of the business people that I would love to meet and I 
and I will meet one day is Richard Branson. Okay, so in 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 buying a book or reading a book about him and what the thing the things were that he did to get to where he is provides me inspiration. It provides me with the knowledge that this wasn't somebody that was born rich or wealthy or successful. They had to work to get there, and so it's possible for me or anybody to really put the time in and put the action in and, and get to that part. So, you know, choose a business hero and purchase a book by them or about them for your own inspiration. Cool. I, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, you're going to, your uh, hero is Richard Branson. And uh, in fact, we had uh, another hangout uh, with my guest, George Fraser. He, he, he shared a tip how to meet anyone, anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. And there's a very specific process. I have met very wonderful, successful people like him. I have not met Richard Branson yet, uh, but however, I met many people, uh, you know, like him in different places. Right. Uh, one of my hangout is YouTube video. They say how to meet anyone anywhere. That's a networking tip. Okay. Well, I'll go look that up, man. Oh, absolutely. That's a wonderful one. That leads us to six. Plan six. a date. Yep. You're still on day five, buddy, but that's okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay. So, see, I can do mistakes. So, <laughs> I'm learning myself too. Embrace it. Embrace failure. All right. Absolutely. So day six and tip six, plan a date. Plan a date. Have and some fun. Read the book you purchased or borrowed. So yes. I don't even have to buy a book. I can even borrow it from. Exactly. But there's, there's this place called the library. It's got all sorts of stuff in it. <laughs> and the library, now my wife was surprised the other day. The library, uh, she went to get a specific book, and they asked her if she wanted the audiobook version of it. So if you don't want to read you know, and you may not have the time or whatever the, the reason is, there is audiobook capability that you can just listen in your car or wherever you are. Okay, so uh, that's the reading the book part of it. Planning a date. Have some fun. You know, that life isn't boring. Life doesn't have to be that difficult, and it doesn't even have to be something that you spend a whole lot of money on. But plan a time where you can hang out and relax but plan it and go ahead and do it. You know, if you don't plan a date with your wife or spouse or your significant others, yep. they will say you are boring. They probably will. They <laughs> probably will. But it is possible to plan a boring date too, so you got to make sure it's fun. <laughs> make sure it's fun. Okay. That brings us to day seven and tip seven. Tip Try seven. Yeah. Try a new sport and find someone to mentor. Okay. Try a new sport. Do something you've not done before. Exercise and getting your blood blood pumping is, is something that is really essential to your success. I don't know of any successful people that do not do something that continues to generate uh, you know blood flow so that they can be creative. Do something different. This month, I mentioned... Uh, P90X earlier, so in February I just got my, uh, let me actually show it to you here, I just got my shipment of P90X3, alright, so I'm going to do that in February, and so that is my trying a new new sport or new activity, so I'll be doing that for, for the month of February. Um, find someone to mentor. Now a lot of people don't understand the importance of mentorship and they never seek out a mentor uh, because, of, because of this. But there, the truth is that wherever we are in life, there's still there's somebody that doesn't have the knowledge that we have. And so life, again, is about relationships and sharing. So if you can find somebody to mentor, you're going to also see the importance of um, helping them with, with their activities and helping them to progress past where they are. And that helps you to grow. I never – some of the things – when I was a teacher, some of the things that I taught – I didn't learn them as well until I started to teach them. So mentorship is going to be helpful to you too. Cool. We are we are into 30 minutes into the hangout, and we are. Sh uh, I'm really enjoying all the tips. Uh, awesome. Uh, uh, sharing, and I'm sure you are enjoying it too if you're watching. So our viewership is almost over double now since we started uh, in 30 minutes. So please go ahead and share this link on your t uh, Twitter, Facebook, and our G Plus wherever you actually hang hang out the whole day, 
because your friends on social media can really change their life and business too. So please go ahead and share the links. Uh, let's let's see how many how many time we can increase our viewership so that everybody really enjoy all this. So that brings us to number uh, tip number eight. All right. Yeah. Watch a movie that you never seen before, and at for a business, you volunteer to speak. All right. Well, you know what? Um, watching a movie that you've never seen before, something really simple. My kids watch the same movies over and over and over again, <laughs> and they're able to repeat the lines. My goodness, for that. And you know, some of us do that. I've never been able to get into buying a DVD of a movie or a Blu-ray because I don't feel like I'm going to watch it again. Um, but some people do. So um, so I'm not necessarily only talking about the specific movie, but maybe a different type of movie. If you normally watch um, horror movies, watch a love story. If you normally watch action, watch a comedy. Just, you know, again, about moving your mind to different perspectives and, and different experiences. Now, uh, Business, volunteering to speak. Um, it doesn't matter where it is. A lot of us don't have the, may feel like we don't have the speaking capability. But when you speak, it actually positions you quite a bit differently. It positions you almost as an expert in certain things. And business is about giving. So. You, it doesn't have to be this big conference. It can be simply you want to speak at a senior center or a school or somewhere where you can share a quick message of encouragement. It doesn't have to be a long message. It could be a five-minute speech, something, but somewhere that you can stand up and share your message with the world. Cool. I agree with that. In fact, uh, I'm not really a professional speaker, and I have spoken at a few places. I have an accent. I speak fast. Too, and many people say, what did you say? It's OK. With over time, uh, you have not seen me before. So I think I have improved a bit, little bit. We all have accents, man. It's OK. <laughs> so that really means if I can do it, if you are thinking like me, you know, like you are watching this, you know what? I'm not a speaker. I'm not a speaker. Come on. When you were a kid, you were really talking to your parents. Until they buy you stuff, you keep talking and talking. <laughs> you are the best speaker. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That leads us to day nine. Day nine. Yeah. So oh. and tip nine, go to a workshop or a one-day class for a business, start a mastermind group. I'm very interested in getting to know more on this one. Yeah. So in the, on the life end of things, going to a workshop or a, or a one-day class, just continually learning, doing things that you've not done before. As, as you see, that's kind of been a theme here. With the, 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 again, the title of this book is 28 days, 28 ways to fire up your life and business. And so you want to en engage and you want to uh, enhance what you're doing. So do something you've never done before. Go If you wanted to learn macaroni art, you wanted to learn how to salsa dance, you know, do it, do it now. You know, check out your YMCA or some local center and see how you can, you know, do something that's a little bit different than you've done before. Masterminds. Now, a lot of people don't even know what that is is and we probably don't have a lot of time to go through the power of masterminds here you know I would say go to Google and get some explanations I actually have just launched a couple of mastermind groups with one of my partners um, and we we this is our first month we're actually having our second group meeting tonight and so the mastermind the ability the the, the beauty of it is that that last part of the word mind it's a group of people that are collected together for the same purpose, the purpose of success, and they would almost be like your your board of advisors. All of you, you've got eight people that share that can share ideas more than more than just the ideas that can come out of your one mind. You've got the power of eight minds together here. So look up masterminding on Google. Check it out if you want to have more conversations about masterminding and joining our mastermind. Then. Feel free to connect with me on my on my site at robertkennedy3.com. Also, I 100% agree on that. I'm a part of a very two very unique masterminds. Uh, one is by Alex Mendozian, the uh, yeah. roundtable, and the second one is uh, is happening in Atlanta in, in two weeks from now. So, 
mastermind is you are really connected with the like-minded people, and you are not the smartest person in the room. Right. You are just a facilitator. If you are starting a mastermind, if you are a part of mastermind, you are one of the members, and everyone is trying to help others how they can solve their problem. And if you have seen how to solve your own challenge, you share your solution. They share their solution. Imagine if there are 20 people in the room. Usually, these mastermind groups are very small—10, 12, 20. You know, so that way you get to know each other very almost like a personalized way, and you know exactly their business. So that's how you build a very deep, strong relationships uh, as a mastermind members. Uh, you know, as a group members, they really help each other. They become your joint venture partners eventually. Right. That leads us to a day 10. Take a place right. Or a helicopter ride uh, for a business. Write down your business goals. In fact, I would admit it. There many, many people do not have written the goals at all. Yeah, man. You, as you're showing, you're seeing. I didn't see that. That's a spelling error. Not a place ride. It should be a plane ride. Plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it should be a plane ride. That. Thank you for being my editor. All right. So again, it's just really about doing something different. I I had never taken a ride on any small planes before. I'd been on commercial jet jetliners and those types of things, but there was a place in Massachusetts that I lived, and there was a small local airport, and they allowed you to go on a small planes that could fit maybe two or three people, the pilot and two other people. Man, that was probably the scariest thing that I'd ever done because the plane, you know, you're up there. Gosh, five thousand feet, and the plane is is shaking, and all of you know, just it feels like it's gonna break apart. <laughs> so, so it's it, it was just something address addressing your fear or or doing something that might be risky for the fun of it sometimes, just to exercise your your courage muscle if you want to do that. Um, so I might need to do something else. I mean, I might I might need to add bungee jumping or something like that on this list here for life. So for business, writing down your business goals, a lot, a lot, a lot. The majority of business owners and people in general don't write their goals down. You know, if you've not done it yet, then how do you know where you're headed to? How do you know what? How to evaluate yourself? So I think it's really important for you to spend about 30 minutes getting really specific about what you want, how much money you want to gain, what you want to develop, what do you want to sell, who do you want to sell it to. It doesn't have to be right. But just get it written down. And you write down your goals. Then when you meet with your joint venture partners, mastermind members, yeah, you know, tell them this is what I want to achieve. Maybe there's someone actually I want to help you. Oh yeah, I can help you to get to make a little more progress on that one. Yep. First you write down your goals, and then you share with other people. Yep. Okay. That brings us to. Day eleven. Day eleven. Tip eleven. Volunteer at a senior center or a homeless shelter. And for on the business side, write a list of what's working and what's not working in your business. Okay. On the life side, um, we get ca caught up in ourselves. We forget about other people, and we think our problems are the only problems. So get out of yourself and get to a place where you can remember that there are other things, other perspectives in life. Go volunteer at a senior center. Or at a homeless shelter, ask not just do stuff there, but ask the people there、uh, what you think, what 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 is happening in their lives. You know, get get new perspectives and and encourage those people as well. On the business end, a lot of times we get so busy doing stuff, we we go from activity to activity that we never take the time to see what is bringing in return. You know, and if you've ever heard of you know the eighty twenty rule, they say,、uh, that twenty percent of your activity should bring about eighty percent of the results. So you need to focus in on that twenty percent. A lot of the stuff, if if we're spending our time really worrying and bothering about that eighty percent too much, and never really figuring out what is working, what's bringing in revenue, and what is、uh, bringing us closer to their goals. Then we may be spinning our wheels quite a bit. So we got to get clear on those things and then adjust as necessary. The next one we're getting into is the day twelve and tip twelve. Before we get into that one, if you're watching this so far and you're really enjoying it, 
I have a special gift for you. So you see that the number tax gift to 404-418-6019, tax it, and I'm going to send you the special gift. I don't want to tell you that. However, you will thank me later on that one. That brings us to tip 12. And day 12 and tip 12, attend a concert or listen to a generic music what you normally listen, not listen to for a business. Write down 20 things that you are thankful for. Okay. Um, well, attending a concert, I mean, it's the same concept as, as the movie. It's really looking to get you familiar, not familiarized, but to experience different things, opening up your horizons in life, exposing you to different perspectives. So that is the idea behind that. In the business, writing down 20 things that you're thankful for, we think about that as something personal, but on the business end, we look for what's broken and we don't really think about what are the things that are working well for us and who we can thank and what I need to thank, be thankful for. So it's important to, to do that pretty regularly. Write down 20 things or anything that you're thankful for in your business. That brings us to day 13 and tip 13. I, I love this one when I was writing this one. Call mm -hmm. someone on the phone who have not spoken, you have not spoken with them in a long time and for business create a vision board. Yeah. Well, this you know what? And all that stuff, so calling someone is big. Yeah. We talked about social media and in this age, with everybody texting and emailing, we forget about the personal communication sometimes. And so, you know, I, I fall into that trap. I, I text my, my, my family and say, hey, what's up? I, I, you know, and, and it doesn't always give you the personal connection. So calling somebody you haven't spoken to in a while is, is important just to get that human intonation in the voice and, and the connection. In business, uh, creating a vision board it, it's really important to see and to visualize what is what you're headed towards. We talked about writing down your goals, but if you can have a board in front of you where you can constantly be focusing on the things that you desire, the things that you want to create, the things that you want to bring about, that really um, is 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 helpful for you. You know, they say that if you the things you focus on are the things that that manifest or that come to be. Okay, so focusing on the things that you want uh, is is really important. I think it was Wayne Dyer that said, what, what did he say? He said, um, if you think about what you want, you'll get that. If you think about constantly what you don't want, you'll get that too. <laughs> so why not think about the things that you really want? That brings us to day 14 and tip 14. Yep. Make a card for someone by hand. Yeah. So we will be kid all the time. Yeah. Go back to kindergarten for a second. You know, color, put glitter on it. You know, it's, it's again, really just getting out of where you are. Sometimes when we grow up, we, we get, we, we lose our sense of humor. We lose our creativity. We lose our imagination. And we're so serious. So, we, you know, we, I get these little cards from my kids. Sometimes they come down to my office and they'll write a note on a piece of paper and I've got stuff. I wish I could grab it for you, little stick figures on it. And it brings me such joy when I look at one of the, some of the things that my kids give to me. So why not share that joy with somebody else? Make them a card. Write them a letter. Okay. For a business, uh, yep. advertise someone else's business or product within an affiliate arrangement. That's, tell us more. This is big. You know what? Joint ventures are huge, and that's one of the biggest, best ways of growing your list and, and, and sharing, getting known or positioning yourself to a greater audience. And so sometimes we figure that we, the only way to start a joint venture is to have something to exchange. So the only way, reason that you, Sadiq, would take something from me is if I have something to sell and then I can uh, share what you have to sell. But sometimes it's really about giving. And if you give first without expecting, then you're going to see a great difference in your business. So sometimes if you've got a list, then just ask somebody about what they're, what they're sharing and then um, feel free if, you've, if you believe that is something that's going to be of great value to your audience, then 
you know, share it or make a note about it, post a link about it, and that's it. Just start sharing, and you'll make a connection with the other business owner as well. Helps build the relationships. In fact, that's a really a, a nice to, tip to actually get attention of a product owner. You know? Yeah. If you start promoting someone without even asking anything in return. Yeah. They say, why he is doing it? Right. And if they start seeing even a few sales from you, they are going to pick up a phone and call you and know you can negotiate the deal the way you want it. Right. I because actually I did a blog post for um, uh, a piece of software, an application that I used in my business, and then I just uh, wrote about how it was awesome on my blog. And then the company called me, say, hey, we want to feature you on our site, and so those types of things. So, you know, it's worth it to just advertise and share good news. That brings us to day 15 and tip 15. Send someone a handwritten letter for a business. Create a list of upcoming conferences or workshops in your industry. This is making you work hard, huh? Now, now we want you to write, send somebody a handwritten letter. Man, handwritten letters are something else. I, I still have in my book, an album, a handwritten letter that my grandfather sent to me about 15 years ago before um, I got married. He wrote to me some grandfatherly wisdom and advice. And that letter is something that I just, I treasure. I treasure. If anything happened to that letter, I don't know what I would do. But it's, it's so imagine transferring that same sentiment to somebody else if you write them something by hand right now. It just really says that I thought about you and I took the time to do this, but nobody else does that anymore. So just, and it's another way to stand out. Do something that nobody else is doing anymore. Okay? Um, in your business, easy one. Create a list of upcoming conferences or workshops in your industry. You want to meet people. You want to find out who is doing what you're doing. You want to find out who needs what you have. So, you know, rub shoulders with people. Get that knowledge. Don't just sit in your office. Get somewhere that people are doing the things that you are doing and, and learn something new about your industry. That brings us to day 16 and tip 16. Buy flowers and give them to a random person. I want to know more about who does this nowadays. You know? Come on. That, again, doing make something that... A business, make a list of all the things that, that you do as a business owner. Yeah, yeah. Buying flowers, nobody does that. Just, I mean, outside of maybe men that are um, married and have some other motives. But, you know, giving flowers to somebody, nobody does it. Again, stand out. Do something awesome. In the business, make a list of all the things that you do as a business owner. Um, solopreneurs, business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, whatever you want to call yourself, everybody's busy. And you really want to get to the point where you're not doing everything on your own. So, Start making a list of all the things that you do so that you can start to separate that a little bit later on. This is very interesting. The day 17, the tip 17. Get a $2 bill from the bank and leave them a tip when you go for eat. <laughs> what is special about $2 bill? <laughs> $2 bill. You know what? I got that one right from James Altucher's blog. You know, he said, again, for the last three or four tips, if you've noticed, I've put things there that are just different that would make you stand out in the mind of the person that you're doing it with, okay? So, you know, who, who gives $2 bills, you know? If you go to the bank and you just, you know, give them a $50 bill and say, hey, give me, give me a bunch of twos, you know, and then you give that at a restaurant and somebody gets that, they're going to remember the person that gave them the $2 bill. Or if you give, if you leave a four dollar tip and you even two two dollar bills, that's something unique. Nobody does that. Nobody has that. Okay, <laughs> so just being different um, in the business side. Write down a list of the things that you can have someone else do. So yesterday or day sixteen, you wrote down all the things that you do. Now you're trying to start the delegation process a little bit. Write down the list. Write down from that list all the things that you can have somebody else do, or something somebody you can train somebody else to do trying to free up your time. Okay, that brings us to a day 18, a tip 18. Yep. Learn to say three sentences in a new language. On a business side, create a list of large five companies that you want to do business with. Yeah. 
So, Sadiq, in your home language, how do you say, how are you? Kya hal hai? Kya hal hai? Yeah. How close was that? Yeah, yeah, it's almost close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You said it first time, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, I think people think it's awesome when you speak their language. Yeah. You know, it's like you're you're identifying with them, or you you are taking the time to know something a little bit more intimate about them. And so you know, if you can learn to do that and, and you share that with people, it immediately makes a connection. It makes a connection with people. My dad used to do that when I was a kid. Um, you know. He didn't. He wasn't a great Spanish speaker, but he learned some Spanish sentences, and when he was around Spanish people, he used them, and it sounded fake, <laughs> but but he used them. So you know, it's it's a gift. It's a gift to other people. Um, for business, create a list of five large companies you want to do business with. Again, another way to focus. It's kind of like your vision board, but now you've got uh, companies that you believe that you can help. And these might be big companies that might be out of your reach. And so, you know, I, I, I created a list once and I put Bank of America on my, on my list. And, you know, and I think as you start to focus on things, sometimes they have a way, way of just appearing. So I put Bank of America on my list. And don't you know, later that day, I received a message from a Bank of America branch executive um, about getting connected. So, you know, that started that process. So you, you never know what can happen. Just go, so go ahead and make that list. Yeah, if he is not on your list, let me tell you, it's not going to happen because you have to start. It should go back on the back of your mind, and you start thinking. That's yeah. How the process works. Yeah, it's like that. It's it's like the process of when you buy a new car. All of a sudden, you see that car all over the place. Yeah, it's too common. <laughs> yeah. 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 I want to add here. Uh, learn to say three sentences in a new language. And Many years ago, maybe five, six years ago, I was in a, I was visiting a park, and there was, you know, of course, uh, I'm the only Pakistani, you know, origin in visiting in the park, and the guy sitting in the, uh, you know, flower, and he said, he, I'm going to say in my Urdu, Urdu language, but he said it, in, I'm going to explain the meaning first. He said, which city you are from, Pakistan? Something like this, he asked me. But he asked me in my own local language. Mm. I cannot forget the guy even today. Right, and then I start. We started having the conversation. He, he only knew a few words, by the way. It's not like me. He was a master of language. Right. But it was so natural. He said, "Like, kahan se ho Pakistan se?" You know. He said me. He asked me in a specific language. And I said, "Oh, the instant connection." Yeah. And then we start talking. Oh, you've been there. What part of the world you visit? You know, how long you were doing? Then suddenly, so really, what you're doing here, and everything correct back to here automatically. But in in like in a no time, he's not a student anymore. Just right. being a one sentence to that person. Exactly. Yeah. And regarding your five large companies, yes, I did. I followed that over the years process, and I was able to connect to the multi-billion dollar companies. Awesome. I mean, not only the list, then you kind of start thinking how I can outreach to that guy. You know. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. You know. So. That's probably another topic altogether. However, you have to put in a list first before you do it. Yes. So that brings us to day 19, tip 19. Go to bed early. Go to bed early. Yeah. And yeah. business, write down your business will look like in five years. I wish we all know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go to uh, number one, go to bed early. It's. Staying up late, I mean, your mind is tired. I'm tired at a certain time. Some people might get a second win, but on a regular basis, um, you may be tired. So it's it really you really need to go to bed um, early so that your mind is fresher, okay, and you can be a little bit more creative. With the business, again, visualization. Write down what your business will look like in five years. Take the limits off. Don't worry about money. You know, there's nothing to lose. What will that business look like, and then shoot for shoot shoot for that? That brings us to day twenty and tip twenty. Yep. Spend some time writing your life plan. Mm -hmm. People don't know even what they're going to do tomorrow. Right. 
same exactly. job, same nine to five. They get up same time. They go, you know, the same nine to five, stuck in the traffic. Then come mm -hmm. back in the evening. It's the same life cycle. Is the same. Yeah. How the people can plan for five years, first of all, and for a business, try chart of your future business. Right. Exactly. So you know, it's it. A life plan is important. Um, we, we talk about the, the the year that we live, that we're born, and the year that we we die. So what happens in between? What what happens during that dash? And it's important to plan that as well. And a lot of people don't. I, I Michael Hyatt, who I used, to, who I've followed for quite some time, um, on his website, he's got a great exercise there on on writing your life plan. So um, you know, go ahead and download it from his site as well, and that will be very helpful to you. Um, on the business side, as you're thinking about or as you're visioning your business, what does that organizational chart look like? You know, I, a few days ago we talked about the um, writing down the list of things that you do, and then we talked about delegating it, and then we talked about um, envisioning the five-year plan. Who are the people now to start putting people into into places? What does your organizational chart look like? Do you want it to be just you? Do you want it to be you and two other people? Do you you know how how do you want it to flow out? And that that kind of gives you a, again a, a vision of what you're heading towards. That brings us to day 21 and tip 21. Yeah. Write your goals for the year for a business. Dream about a product that you can create and you have not created. Yes. yes. Write your goals for the year. Again, a lot of us don't write them. We talk about New Year's resolutions, but we don't really have any actionable goals. And it's really about what you can, what you can accomplish or what you will accomplish over the next 365 days. And it's important to see that in front of you. Um, on the business side, dreaming about one product that you can create. This is the information age. So a lot of things um, that you see online are really people telling you what they've done or how they've done it. You know, you see every, you got a lot of information on YouTube. And so people are making money in this way. So you can start thinking about what is one thing that you can do that you know maybe other people don't do or don't know how to do in the way that you do it. So that might be a product that you can create. Day 22 and tip 22, go for a walk in your neighborhood. Yep. For the business side, which one person uh, can you help to achieve a great portion of the business dream? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the walk in the neighborhood it serves a few purposes. Number one, a lot of times, most of us just drive in our neighborhood. We drive to our house, and then we drive to work. And they, we're not really clear on all of the little things that exist in our neighborhood. So going for a walk gives you a different perspective on that neighborhood. Who, who are the people that are there? Who are your neighbors? What do they do? How can you help them? You know, whose fence needs painting? Who needs lawn needs mowing? Get familiar with your neighborhood and, and the needs. Oh, uh, business? On the business side. Okay, uh, which person can you help? or can help you achieve a great portion of your business dream. Um, again, we talked about mentors earlier. Who, you know, looking, uh, intentionally seeking out mentors or people that can be helpful in your business. It doesn't have to be through money. It just might be through information or sharing knowledge. So who is the person that you will intentionally seek out to help you with that? That brings us to 20, day 23, tip 23. Gather up things in your house that are not being used and donate them. I'm yeah, sure a lot of it. <laughs> it's not small because we keep collecting junk. And regarding business, create a plan to meet a person in next 365 days in next one year. Get rid of the clutter, man, and donate it. It's uh, there's a saying that you if you don't have room to receive, then if if you're not giving things, then you won't have room to receive either. You're just, you're kind of the, the blockage. You're supposed to be a conduit. So if you want things to come in, then you've got to have things going out. So, you know, get gather, get rid of the clutter, start purging. Uh, create a plan. We talked about the person that you believe can help you in your business. Create a plan to meet that person. It's not going to happen by itself. It's not going to happen randomly. Actively seek to create um, something to allow you to meet that person. Find their email address. Get on LinkedIn and see who's connected to them. Uh, something. But create a plan and then intentionally seek out that person. Don't stalk them.
that brings to day 24, tip 24, make a decision now for a business, create a humorous uh, t-shirt about your business. Yeah, life, uh, analysis paralysis. A lot of people sit and think and analyze things for days at a time and they never make a decision. I say make a decision now. What's the thing that you've been thinking about the last couple of weeks? Make a decision about it today, okay? On the business side, create a humorous t-shirt about your business. Life isn't that serious and your business isn't that serious either, okay? If your business uh, died today, you know, what would you do about it? You know, it, it's life, there's a whole lot to life. So create something humorous. Go to sites like Spreadshirt.com for on-demand printing and make fun of yourself if you want to. That brings us to day 25, tip 25, get up early to do something you enjoy. Yes. For a business, go to network event with no business cards and generate 20 follow-up discussions. Tell us more. Yeah. Uh, get up early to do something you enjoy. Do something different. If you like playing video games, get up at 5 o'clock one morning just to play video games. If you like to, um, let me see, if you like to s jump rope, if you like to go for a run, if you anything that you like to do, if you like to eat dessert, Maybe you get up in the morning and eat chocolate cake at 5 o'clock in the morning. Do something different. Spice it up. Fire it up. Okay? In business, go to a networking event with no business cards and generate 20 follow-up discussions. I have taken on not going with business cards or taking only one or two. When you, when you don't have business cards, you're forced to tell people a little bit more about you and generating a little bit more of an interesting story to give them a reason to follow up with you. Okay, so try that out. See if, see if it's something that you that that makes you approach networking just a little bit differently instead of you know just handing out cards and having a false relationship. I like that hanging handing out cards and creating having a false relationship. Yep. That brings us to day twenty six. Uh, yep. Twenty six. Create a list of five healthy and easy to fix meals. Yep. Decide to volunteer to work at a business conference or, or event. Uh, life. Create a list of five healthy and easy to fix meals. Start paying attention to your health. That's all it is. Nothing complex about it. Create, pay attention to your health. On the business side, volunteer to work at a business conference or event. A lot of times you might want to go to a conference, and we spoke about this before, um, especially if it's one that's being held in your city. Maybe one of the ways to get there without paying is to volunteer to work there. So. There are a lot of uh, vendors, there are a lot of booths, there are a lot of things that can be done. And you can you, you can meet people that way as well. That brings us to day 27, tip 27. Yep. Go find a funny video online, you must laugh out loud. Yes. So for business, create an activity that can do and lead to in your community. Life is fun. Life is, is has hard days, but there are also days that are fun and the fun doesn't happen sometimes unless you create it so laughter they say is the best medicine find something there's always something that you can laugh about there's a whole bunch of stuff on YouTube so <laughs> find something to laugh about laugh out loud in business create an activity that you can lead in your community some business owners are looking for acti activities that they can participate in and, so and some aren't even looking at all so being visible in your community is one of the best ways to make people aware of who you are and what you're doing. So how about creating an activity instead of trying to wait for it to come around? Create something and act like a leader. That brings us to day 28, tip 28, last but not the least. Fix something that you have been meaning to fix for a long time. Yeah. And for business, write an article about a community event or something important to your business. Yeah. My wife's going to get me for this one. I've been meaning, needing to fix that doorknob on the back door for a little while. It's not locking properly. So I'm speaking to myself. i got to get that fixed. <laughs> so cleaning up and just kind of locking into the things in your life that you've been ignoring for a little bit, uh, th that's going to help fire you up and create some new th opportunities for you as well. In business... It's writing also gives you position. It also positions you as someone who is an expert, someone who has an opinion, someone who's willing to share that. So if you want to write an art, if you want to share with the world something that's important to you and your perspective on it, write an article about a community event, 
um, write a blog post about it or just write something and then maybe submit it to examiner.com or to a local um, paper or something of that nature and that does something for positioning you as well. Robert, thank you so much. We covered 28 tips. So what is the first physical action step you want to get you want to keep, get started with your life and business performance transformation? Uh, the first physical action step, if people want to connect with me, they can simply go to chatwithrobert.com. Okay, well, they can simply And you, here, here's a simple way too. You can text Robert to 404-418-6019. Once you put a message, Robert, I'm going to send all the information, your name, email, awesome. number to Robert, and Robert will contact you directly. There you go. Easy. So text Robert. Take your cell phone out. You know, if you don't know what a cell phone is, look at this. This is a cell phone. <laughs> okay. Take your cell phone. Text to 404-418-6019. You don't need a smartphone. You can use text with any phone. You know. So text and put to Robert, and that will get the information to Robert. Okay. Awesome. What would you say as a final word? Who would like to join you? Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What would you say as a final word? Who would like to join you to build their life, performance, uh, and business? You know, I would say that it, life is 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 filled and brimming with possibilities. And uh, some people wonder or try to wait for something to get done. And so I just say every day, be bold, be exceptional. Each moment that you live is just an opportunity for you to create something new. That's it. Live life with purpose and power. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Robert Kennedy, the third, for sharing your wisdom today with us on the behalf of Online Training Universe. Uh, yeah. and we appreciate you. This is Mohammed Sadiq. Wish you good luck, good sales, and I do hope our path cross again on our next hangout at Online Training Universe. All good wishes. Awesome. Thank you so much.